so my name is Judy May Murphy, and I'm all about your dream coming true. Um, I'm all about you know you making sure that in this lifetime you get and do everything that you plan to, to have, the things that you dreamed about from when you were a small child. And it seems to a lot of people that um, there are things getting in the way. And first of all, um, uh, one thing that I was doing a couple of weeks ago was I was watching this old movie. And it's a movie from the 1970s called Brother, Son, Sister, Moon. And in it, there was a song. And the song um, was so beautiful to me. And it said, if you want your dream to be, take your time, go slowly. And this was really confusing to me because as a success coach, I know that a lot of making your dream come true is all about momentum and massive action and really, you know, going for it. So, you know, why was it that this, um, that this so attracted me? And I think it's because uh, a lot of times these days we are all about frenetic action. We're all about just kind of going for it, going for it, going for it. And then we're frustrated when we give it all we can activity-wise and we end up with so little results. So the reason I think for that is that for years we were operating under this particular uh, equation. And that was that you got information. And then, based on that information, you made an okay decision, and the decision only had to just be all right. And from that, you got some kind of a positive result. So what exactly are we talking about here? Uh, it could be that you were a farmer, and that your job was to make it. And you heard that uh, what was going to happen was there was a storm coming. That was your information. Either you got that information by looking out the window, or someone told you, they traveled, and they said, oh, there's a storm coming. And based on that, you then went and uh, you know, covered the hay, simple task, and our result is happy hay farmer. Uh, or it could have been something as simple as, you know, you heard that a woman was flirting with your husband, you hit the woman over the head with your handbag, and your relationship, such as it was, was saved for now. <laughs> so, you know, this is what people are talking about when they talk about much simpler times, when they talk about, you know, things being easier back then. The, the, the complication that we have is that these days we receive all this information in overload. We receive too much information. And this added to a fatigued decision. There's a thing called decision fatigue. And that is that when you have to make a whole bunch of decisions, what happens is those decisions become less and less worthy, if you like, less and less useful to you. And the result then is either a poor result or complete paralysis. So it might be that you just decide not to do anything at all. Now, within this, when I talk about a decision, um, action is within that decision. If you don't take action based on it, it's not a decision, it's just still an idea or a notion. So whenever we talk about decisions, we're in fact talking about active decisions, decisions that lead to you doing something. And it's really common, people already know what the overload is all about. The overload is all about everything coming into us from the media, it's all about um, you know, having all this Twitter stuff, Facebook, social media. Um, it's all about just kind of feeling shouted at the whole time, feeling like there's just so much information. And in fact, even in Greek times, it's been recorded that they felt that there was too much information going on. So that, in fact, is not new. Um, but this certainly this idea of uh, decision fatigue, when added to our information overload, is the thing that's um, causing the problem. Because what happens is, if you think of it, that the that the information is kind of like a river. It's a big stream. And it used to be that that was a trickle. And it would be very easy for you to go and to, to drink from that stream, to just kind of put your head down and get what you needed and move on. Whereas, obviously, using that same strategy, if it's a huge torrent of water, that's just not going to work. That's going to take your head off. So we've got to get a little bit more strategic about it, particularly if we want to get a good result. So. An example I want to use is this YouTube little friend of mine. She's uh, called Cassandra Croft. She's 19 years old, and she vlogs every day. And she puts up her life on YouTube. And these are her two roommates, Andrew and Jesse. And um, so let's just use Cassandra as an example, because like most young people today, you know, she's very typical of what's going on in the world in terms of um, how she's plugged into the world. So let's imagine that Cassandra, on this particular day, she wants to bake Andrew and Jesse a cake. And she's not the most domestic person in the world. Now, years ago, it would have been easy. On the old equation, it would have been that her, her information would have been limited, or at least contained. 
and she would have just maybe gone to her mother or her grandmother, got the cake recipe, and then her decision is, well, do I make it now or do I make it later? Do I you know, use this ingredient or that ingredient? So the result would happen. Whereas now, she'd probably spend all day on Google looking for different cake recipes. Now added to that, so that's the information part of the equation. The next part is the decision fatigue part. Imagine that she had been spending the day, you know, sorting out what the rent was, um, you know, working out, you know, how to pay the phone bill, just making a whole bunch of decisions before she had to make the cake decision. Well, the chances are that she is, she's going to decide this is too much. It's just, it's, it's not happening for me. It just feels too awful. She'd move away from it, move into paralysis, and it just wouldn't happen. So although she's got you know, more information, she's getting an impoverished result based on the equation, this new equation that we're talking about. So um, how is it that we can move away from this idea of you know, information overload plus fatigue decision equals paralysis or poor result? Well, the first part of it is a thing that I call information grooming. So first of all, you've got to decide what information is pertinent to your dream. Because a lot of people are just letting absolutely anything in there. Um, so if your dream is to become a great musician or your dream is to have an amazing body, well then obviously the information that you want to be getting, not just through the internet, but through the people that you hang out with, needs to be pertinent to what your dream is. The next part of it is, you know, the quality. So as well as working out, you know, what the dream is and, and really having a mission is just all about making a decision because these days we can choose from hundreds and hundreds of things. It's a, a luxury that wasn't afforded to people years ago. And because we can choose from all these things, um, what we, can, we often tend to just choose too much and we try and live a hundred lifetimes in one lifetime. And of course, the, the, the quality of the results suffers because of that. Um, in fact, the best advice I ever heard was from my friend Hillary, who said, um, in terms of uh, you know, getting great passion into your life, her advice is just pick one and get on with it. And I, I just love that for focus. So the quality is you know, where do you feed from? Where are you getting your information? Now, um, a lot of people you know, will get great information from, uh, from the internet. Um, and a guy called Eli um, Pariser has talked brilliantly in uh, TED and uh, on, uh, on other occasions about the, the downside of the way that we're fed this information. The fact that all of the search engines, you know, they know who you are and they feed you things that you think are pertinent. And what Eli talks about is how that can limit you, it can stop you from growing, but then there's an upside of it. And that is that it can also, you know, keep you well focused. The next thing is time. That's the next factor. That, you know, just as they say, you know, if, if you are sitting eating a huge meal, you've got to, before you know, the, the meal is finished, if you are full, if you've got your result, you've got to be happy to just push away the table. And it's the same thing um, with everything else. If, if you're in a conversation for a particular reason, you don't have to hang on endlessly in that conversation um, once you've got the information that you need. So that's the information part of the equation. The next part is the decision making. And I call this decision maximizing. And there are three elements to this. There's the glucose glucose levels that you've got going on in your brain, there's what you believe about willpower itself, and there's the number of decisions that you've already made in that day. So first of all, glucose levels, this is something that um, Roy Bo uh, Bowmaster is talking about um, brilliantly in, in Florida right now, and that is how when you've got a certain amount of glucose going on in your brain, you're better able to make a decision. Now, this isn't an excuse to go off and have a huge cake 12 times a day, um, but, but it is, and you know, it, it is a good reason to do this thing we call grazing, just eating little and often. Uh, the next thing that we can do is, um, but we can um, have a new story about what we're capable of. Uh, there's a brilliant woman. She is the professor of psychology at Stanford University, and her name is. Carol um, Dwyer, I think. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. She's an amazing uh, individual. And she talks all about um, the studies she's done around willpower. And it's been proven that people who believe that their willpower is endless, that they can keep going on, that even after they get tired, they can keep making decisions, they can keep making things happen, this tends to be true. This, is, you know, this tends to, to, to happen just because they have this belief. So you can ask yourself, do you have a belief about your ability to keep going and keep making decisions throughout the day. And just holding that new belief that, yeah, you know what, I can keep rocking out, I can keep making quality decisions, that combined with you know, making sure that you have glucose um, leads to much better decision-making processes happening throughout the day. The next thing, and this is the thing that really excites me, is 
um, what I call a rotating schedule because the, the, the biggest decider of how quality your decisions are is how many decisions have you made previous to that decision in that day. And it's been shown, um, I th it was John Tierney, a uh, writer from the New York Times, who talks about um, how uh, judges in Israel, if they were making a certain decision about a similar type of prisoner you know, in the morning first thing, how their decisions would be much better. And when, if they happened later on, when the judge was tired, had, having made a lot of big decisions, or hadn't had glucose on board, how those decisions were less good. So we can maximize our decision making by having what I call a rotating schedule. And that's based on the fact that there are certain times during your day that you will be making better decisions. So who do you reserve these times for? Is it that um, those times are for, you know, given to your boss? Or are those times given to making decisions that won't make your dream come true, like who to add or not add on Facebook? So you've got to make sure that, you know, that the, the prime times during the day, the time just after you've um, eaten or the time uh, when you're fresh in the morning, that those times are being given to you and to your dream. Um, so as we can see, using this model here, um, we can have a whole new uh, equation that we can very easily work. A strategically sourced, that strategically sourced information plus a strongly made decision leads to an inspired result. And um, this is the way that we need to move forward so that we don't become swamped by all the great um, things that are happening in our lives. This is how we can evolve into our, our new situation. So why is this um, new way of running the equation important? Well, I believe that it's really important because you were put here for an amazing reason. It's kind of like you have this secret genius inside you that you might have clarity around what that is, or you might not. You might know exactly why you've been put here, or it might be a work in process, it might be a work of discovery. But it's that thing, that little feeling that you have, that you know that there's more, that you know that there was a reason that you were put here. And this is what is unleashed when we start to live carefully rather than frenetically. And so, this is really what I wish for you, is that you can take the time to do this. And as they said in the movie, do few things but do them well. Heartfelt work grows purely. Day by day, stone by stone, build your secret slowly. And I wish you every success in building your secret because I know it's a great one and I can't wait until the day when we all find out what it is. Thank you. Thank you.